Do you know how space companies are funded? And it might surprise you to learn that the majority of space companies here in the United States and around the world are government funded, at least partially. Despite the term commercial space, which is a more controversial term when you think about the fact that a lot of the money still comes from governments. But there is a lot of private capital that does flow into space companies, especially here in the United States. I'm gonna go through all the options, all the different ways that space companies are funded, at least here in the United States, there are a lot of avenues for funding. If you are a founder or an executive in a space company, or you are interested in starting a space company or branching into space and looking for that funding, this will be very helpful for you to learn all the different ways, all the different organizations that are out there, government bodies that provide funding to space companies. I'm Lara Forsick. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. And probably the number one topic that startups come to me this year about is funding. It's not like it was a couple of years ago, back in 2021, when money was just flowing from venture capital. There was so much money going into space companies in 2021 that a lot of bad decisions were made. And it was around that time frame that most of the recent SPOCs, that Special Purpose Acquisition Corporations, SPOCs, Space SPOCs, there was an article that came out today by Space News. I will link it below. It's an overview of where we stand with those 2020, 2021, 2022 SPOCs. Box, space box. And it is certainly a mixed bag. A lot of those companies had no business going public when they went public. But some of them are doing quite well. Some of them are not doing so well. And some of them are no longer public or even exist anymore. I will talk about exits a little bit later in the video. But first, I want to talk about what happened in 2021, because 2021 is when my company started really seeing investors come to us, investors that were not space investors, coming to us for advice, for due diligence. And I think a lot of the reason was because, one, there was a lot of money flowing, and two, because people were so excited about space, and in particular, they were so excited about SpaceX. But SpaceX is a private company. It is not publicly traded. It is not going public, but it has a huge excitement excitement factor. I think a lot of the investors are finding alternatives to SpaceX to put their money into. If I can't fund this company, I'm going to fund another company. And by the way, in June, there was a valuation done on SpaceX, even though it's not going public right now or maybe ever, there was a valuation done on SpaceX that brought it up to $210 billion. I am no expert on valuations, so I don't know how they got that figure, but I will link below in case you're curious to learn. And that does take me to the first way that companies are funded, which is found the founders themselves. And this is how, of course, my company was started because my company only cost like a couple hundred dollars to start being a consulting company. But most space companies, they require more money, right? They, they are hardware companies or they need teams that they need to build up fast and therefore they need money fast. And the quickest way to get that is if the founders are already bringing in their own private wealth. This is not terribly common, but it, it certainly is one of the easiest ways to get a company kickstarted with that initial funding. If you are not a wealthy individual who can fund your own company to you know great extent, then you might wanna look into a pre-seed round that's also called Called friends and family. And also angel investors come in around this stage too, when you're just starting and you really don't have a lot to show, but you have a solid business case, a solid plan for moving forward. You might even be starting to hire up a team and you need that initial pre-seed funding. That is how most startups that either come to me for market research or who do pitch deck reviews or any other advice, that's usually where they are, is they're in that pre-seed round. After that is seed funding, and then comes series A, series B, series C, series D, etc. Anytime that there is a need for an influx of cash, and often those numbers get larger and larger, you know, into the uh, single millions, uh, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, etc. That's when you see in the background a company raising funds. And this is really common. This is very common. If you look at space news as it comes in, every week there's news about this company raised this amount, this company raised that amount. It's very, very common. But of course, there's all kinds of caveats with private funding. Um, the more rounds you do, the more that the equity is diluted. And there are certain expectations in terms of return on investment, both in numbers and in time frame. Here's my caveat in that I am not a lawyer. I'm not an attorney. I'm not in any way an expert on funding. And so if you do want to go in this direction, I recommend you talk to the proper authorities, the proper people who are well-trained in giving you the explanations about what's legal and what's not in your particular country. 
What may surprise you is that almost every space company is either pursuing government funding or obtaining government funding. Government funding is still like the number one way that companies are funded in space. And there's a plethora of ways to get government funding. It's not easy by any means. I'm not saying it's easy, but there are a lot of different avenues. Even my tiny company that has never submitted a proposal to a government still has had government contracts because they came to us or has been a subcontractor on two NASA grants, for example. So when I tell you that almost all space companies are in some way getting government funding directly or indirectly, like, I mean almost all space companies, at least here in the United States. Now, as with government, there is no single source of information about how to get a government grant and what all the government grant options are. So I recommend two websites, SAM, SAM.gov and grants.gov. I'll link them below. And that's where you can find everything that you need about US government funding. It's just not gonna be easy to sort through. <laughs> But it should all be there, with the exception, of course, of the black funding from the Department of Defense, where it's not going to be all easily spelled out. So all kinds of caveats in what I'm about to get into, by the way, when it comes to Department of Defense funding, you know, national security versus civil space funding. And civil space is a lot more transparent in where the funding is and how much and where it goes, whereas there are whole big consulting companies that can walk you through some of the Department of Defense options, but I will talk about it here in this video. A a lot of government agencies have SBIRs, SIBRs, also STTRs, Small Business Technology Transfer. I always get that wrong because it's not actually STTR, it's not the acronym. But in any case, SBIR, STTR, those are very common. They are at NASA, they are at different Department of Defense organizations. So if you are a small business, you can go after one of those types of grants if you qualify. NASA has a system called NSPIRES, that's NASA Solicitation and Proposal Integration Review and Evaluation System. And within NSPIRES, there's a lot of different types of grants. NIAC, for example, NASA Innovative Advanced Concepts. One of my clients has won two NIAC phase ones. NASA also has a science branch of grants that's called the Research Opportunities in Space and Earth Sciences, ROSES. So there's different portals where you can access the different opportunities for NASA funding. And you don't have to be a business, by the way. A lot of these grants are given to universities or research organizations. And some of them, like NIAC, can be given to individuals. Now, I just mentioned phase one. That is the initial grant. It is the initial pool of money that is given to a company or organization for the first time. Some of these grants, many of them have phase twos, which are sort of a, a continuation of the same project. They're usually more money and they're usually more competitive because there's fewer opportunities for a phase two versus a phase one. And even some of these opportunities have phase threes, which are even more competitive because there's like one or two that are awarded. I've been talking mainly about NASA here because NASA is what people think of when they think of US space government organization, but there are other government agencies I'll probably do a whole video at some point about what government agencies in the United States are involved in space. But outside of the DOD, you do have NASA, of course. You have NOAA, you have the National Science Foundation. NASA has the most funding for space-related topics, but there are other government agencies, even state-level organizations that are giving out grants. A previous job of mine, we were funded primarily by a state level grant in Florida. So I would be aware of not only the federal opportunities, but also the regional opportunities around you, whether it's state or city or county level, you'd be surprised at what funding is out there. I have been saving this graphic for so long because I think it is so useful. I refer to this, this graphic because I get confused as to all the different Department of Defense organizations and how they all relate to space. This graphic was put together by the Aerospace Industries Association. I will link it below so you can see it in more detail and breaks down the fact that it's not just like Space Force that does space. Of course, Space Force is a whole category here, but there are lots of different Department of Defense organizations that do space, that give out grant money for space. A lot of these are SIBR, STTR, and some of them are other opportunities that just might come up. I recommend going to each of the different websites because there is, again, no solid list of information about where the opportunities are and how to apply. And when it comes to money, like total amounts of money, the Department of Defense has way more money dedicated to space than NASA does. NASA is the big brand name, and it was created as a civil organization on purpose, separate from the Department of Defense, although, you know, from its early ages, it, they worked together. But Space Force at this point has a larger budget than NASA, and that's just Space Force. That's not even all the other organizations that are involved in space on the national security side. I have seen a trend in the past year, maybe two years, where 
there is more money flowing from the Department of Defense into space than from NASA into space. And so I have seen pivots from space companies that started out more on the civil and commercial side going more towards the Department of Defense and looking to see where they can fit in in terms of the Department of Defense needs and those umbrella organizations. And then, of course, you've got sales. So any company that is actually to the point where they are operational, they are bringing in their own revenue, they are you know generating sales. And so it depends on the complexity of the company as to when they become cash flow positive, when they become profitable, and whether or not it makes sense for them to then go public to have an exit um, if they are profitable or if they're not at that stage yet. And that was the downfall of a lot of the space SPACs was that most of them were not yet operational and not yet profitable. The ones that are doing the best were already there, were already operational at least. And therefore they were able to have that return on investment that's expected from investors. I did a whole video on this. If you want to check that out, I will link it here above. One thing that is also really common in the space industry is acquisitions. So companies either sell their entire company to get acquired by a larger company and and there's even portfolio companies that sort of bring in lots of different companies and have the different components of that company. You know, Voyager Space, for example, they started out as sort of a portfolio company and now they're kind of merging all the brands together. Also selling out like parts of companies, not the whole company, well, it's spinning off a company to be sold. All of these are really common. It's not like every week in the news, but I'd say like a few times in a month, you'll see that this company was acquired by that company in the space news. A lot less common, but still happens is that a company will go bankrupt and another space company will acquire its assets. Mast and Space Systems, for example, when they got acquired by Astrobotic. Obviously, that's not ideal, but that does happen. I think that covers the majority of ways that companies are funded. There are probably other little ways that companies are funded that I'm missing here. If you are a space company that is looking for funding, my company does help out with that. So go ahead and contact us at astrolytical.com.